this is Mark from SM Postcards again. So today on this video, I'm going to go through a few things. I'm going to start with some cards that buyers purchased from our eBay and Etsy stores. And then I'm going to get into a special topic on felt pennant postcards. What are they? What do they sell for? And a little history on them. And then I have another postcard term, a definition for DPO, a DPO post office. What is that? And then I, at, the, at the end of the video, stick around, I picked up some more postcards from antique stores and I won an auction for a lot of cards that I'll show you as well. So let's go ahead and get started on the cards that sold on eBay. Now remember, going through to what sold isn't about how much money or how many cards, it's the variety. Chrome, linen, white border, uh, different types of cards that people are looking for. Um, I'll show you the front of the card, the back of the card, a little bit about the card, and possibly the title that I used to trigger people to buy it. So when you go out sourcing at the antique malls, flea markets, eBay, or whatever, you kind of get a feeling of what to look for. Instead of just looking through a box, you can kind of say, hey, I've saw that card before, those sell. And remember, ideal in the chrome, the linen, divided back and undivided back, and white border cards. I don't do a lot of the undivided backs or the RPPCs. I will sell them when, if I do see them and they come in and they're good cards, good subject. But I kind of focus on the lower end of the spectrum with the model that we have. A bunch of cards on eBay and we only sold like three cards on Etsy and zero on HIP. Um, we sell on eBay, Etsy, and HIP for our postcards. HIP is always slower, it's just a more of a niche, uh, micro niche site in there. They have hip postcard, hip comic, hip stamp. So anything you put on eBay automatically goes over to hip. So that's usually the lowest one. And then Etsy is even kind of slower. So if you've been doing postcards for a while and you're looking for another site to sell on, uh, Etsy or hip, hip would probably be a good one. You're not going to gain a lot, but it is another site that people go to. Uh, Etsy is a different fee structure. They don't have a store. It's 20 cents for four months every time you put a listing up. So you want to be careful if you put 100 cards up there. You know, every four months you're going to get hit with that rolling cost if they don't sell. So I always recommend to people if they're going to start selling postcards, eBay is probably the best one to start with. And then that will carry you through the Etsy and the HIP. And HIP it automatically syncs with eBay. So whatever you put on eBay will go to HIP. But Etsy, your eBay, once you get your sales and your cash flow up, it, eBay will help carry your build up on the Etsy. So we only have... We have close to 20,000 cards on eBay. We have about 3,800, 3,900 cards listed on Etsy. And whatever is on eBay goes to HIP. So there's 20,000 cards over there. But you want to, eBay is probably the most recommended place. They've been doing postcards for years. There's over 9 million postcards listed on eBay. So that's a good place to find postcards too. So the first card that sold is the Kansas State College Manhattan Kansas. It's a linen card. Just straightforward. There's your blue from the linens. It's an unposted card. Colleges and everything always sell. I look for those. As you'll see in a lot at the end, uh, some of the cards I purchased at the end of this video, you'll see there's a hospital and there's a university. But my title for this one was Postcard Kansas State College Manhattan, Kansas. Some people see Kansas as a duplicate, but it kind of flows. So, postcard, Kansas State College, Manhattan, Kansas. So, college, Kansas, someone went there. Uh, they know where this is. Now, here's another type of postcard that sold on eBay. And we had colleges before, universities, they always sell. Hospitals. Hospitals, I always look for when I'm going through boxes. Uh, they sell. So, this is of the Wayne County Memorial Hospital in Honesdale, Pennsylvania. It's just a chrome card, probably from the 60s, around there, unposted. And this is uh, actually going uh, international to Moscow, Russia. So somebody knows something. Maybe they did their internship at this uh, hospital, whatever. But always look for colleges and hospitals. Now, this is another type of postcard. And I, I'm not going to show you all the postcards, like I said, that we sold. Uh, just not to drag it out, whatever. But I kind of handpicked some of the cards that we have here. And these I always pick up if they're, you know, for a good price. And I can resell them. But... The Holiday Inn cards, there's collectors out there that look for Holiday Inn. This is the one for, it says Holiday Inn, 
and it usually has a name. It's Joplin, Joplin, Missouri. So the Holiday Inn card, I listed this yesterday. This sold in less than 24 hours. So most of the Holiday Inn cards always go, especially when they have their older sign and logo like that, and they say the state and the city on the back. So if you can get these for, you know, 15 cents, 10 cents, they'll sell for, you know, five, six dollars. So that's a good card. This is going to Ben in Charleston, South Carolina. So not even close to Joplin, Missouri. I'll show you this card here and then I'll get into the special topic on felt pennant postcards. So this is a shrimp boat on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Just a chrome card, but it's got a nice sunset on there and, you know, unposted. But there's the shrimp boat right there. That was a nice looking card. Someone's probably going to frame this or not sure, you know, collecting. They live in the Outer Banks. So this is going to Elizabeth in Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina. So it is going to North Carolina. Another thing, with 99.9% .9 of my postcards now on eBay, I've been using that eBay standard envelope. And they, it fits right on <coughs> this 6.5 by 4.5 car, uh, em, envelope just fine. So I don't remember a card except for internationals or something that I package differently that is not using the eBay standard envelope. They're all going out that way. I use the stamps and other things for Etsy and HIP because they don't have the eBay standard envelope, but that's been working real well. I still don't see the scans going through. Um, it's still about 85% are getting a delivery scan. So 15% are not showing all the scans is basically what I'm seeing still. We do have a video on 100 mailings and what the stats are. And also some videos on the eBay standard envelope and how it works. Now I'm going to get into the special topic for this video. It's called felt pennant postcards or pennant cards as they've been also called. What I'm talking about are these types of cards. And I have some other examples here too. It's basically a printed card that they attach a felt pennant to that has a name on there. A location or etc. So that's what I'll be talking about on what a felt pennant postcard is. So, here below me is the definition of a pennant card. A pennant card is a type of card which a cut felt pennant bearing the name of a location would be attached. Now, I've seen them not just with the location, I've seen them with the local sports team, high school, or whatever on there, but this is what it is. Now, there is uh, also cards that don't have the felt, but it has a pennant uh, on there, and those are printed. And a lot of these cards underneath this felt will have a pennant that's blank or have something else and they'll just put whatever local thing on there. <clears throat> Since felt can be printed on, cards could be easily personalized. So a lot of smaller towns, a lot of smaller places in the days, didn't have access to big printing companies or the budgets to buy a lot of cards. So they would buy the printed cards and then they would buy the the different pennants to put on them so in their rack they'd have all these different things so it was pretty cheap to do. For example, I bought a bunch of postcards locally for around here in Illinois and one of the small farm towns, Martington, Illinois, which is about 20 minutes south of me, is a very small farm town and there was one in there that said Martington, Illinois and I put that up and it sold within 24 hours so it was a very specific small town uh, felt pennant and they picked it up and the guy even asked me if I had any more Martin to cards and I didn't. Felt pennants with a specific names printed on them they could better satisfy the needs of the local audience that might not otherwise have access to view cards of, uh, to buy. So walking into the local grocery store you see your high school football team on there. It's probably the same picture where it's all the small town the salesman went to uh, and they just stuck different felts on there. A variation of the pennant card was substituting metal foil along here. And I don't have an example of one of those, but sometimes they would put foil across there too. The price of these cards depends on the location, the condition of the felt, uh, and stuff like that. But it's really about the location that's printed on uh, the pennant. And they can range, I've seen them anywhere from 5 to $15. Now there might be some higher priced ones out there for special towns that are no longer here or whatever, but it's usually between 5 and $15 that I've seen these cards sell. 
Now, the first card I got here, like I was showing you, there are all kinds of bridges in Sherwood, North Dakota, but auction bridge for me. So it's basically a picture of a bridge, and it has the town. This was posted in 1914. It's a divided back card. It has a two cent stamp on it. So that's uh, one of the cards there. The next card uh, example I have, it comes high in Tyler, but we must have it. So some guy's lifting some kid up into a window and it says Tyler right on there. So that's pretty easy and cost effective to put on there. But if you notice the type of felt uh, used is almost just a little bit darker than the other one. And this card was actually postmarked 1912 and it's a divided back with a one cent stamp on it. So these are older cards, but that's another example of one. And then you get into and enjoying the sights and good lookers everywhere. This is Quaker Town. So big Q, letters go down small. It's an undivided back card. I would probably say it's in the early 1900s as well. But if you notice the color, it's like a purple, like a violet color there. And the last example I have of a felt pen a card is another Quaker Town. Somebody is waiting for you in Quaker Town. There's a reason. So basically the salesman of this card could go around and sell the same printed card to multiple towns and all he'd have to do is put a different piece of felt on there with a name. So all the cost is basically just the printing of the name there. So it could be you know, somebody is waiting for you in Chicago, someone's waiting for you in Philadelphia, someone's waiting for you in St. Anne, someone's waiting for you in Moments, Illinois. Very easy for a salesman to sell these cards and very cost effective for the local things. And this is a divided back card as well uh, from there. But it's just a picture of a lady, that can, very generic that they could use. So that's felt pennant cards. So when you see those, they do sell. They are a little long tail, but if you get the right subject for the right price, they're a good card to not pass up. Felt pennant cards. Who knew? Okay, I'm going to show you about two or three more cards that sold on eBay, and then I'll get into the definition of what a DPO is. So it's kind of interesting and things to look for as you go through the cancels and looking for postcards. Another thing to look for. So this next card is... Uh, Choo Choo Barn, Strasburg, Pennsylvania. It's a miniature uh, setting on there, and they have a cutout of inside the Big Top 10. So it's called the Choo Choo Barn, and you'll see it right up here is their logo, Choo Choo Barn. It's just a chrome card showing a diorama of some miniatures in there. And this is going to George in Palm Springs, California. Next card I knew was going to sell. I just put it up yesterday. It sold in less than 24 hours. And no, it isn't an original postcard of the Titanic. If it was the White Star Line postcard, real photo postcard of the Titanic and stuff, it would definitely be worth a lot more. This is just a chrome card of a painting of the Titanic. Um, it's probably mass produced. It says RMS Titanic on there. It's just, you know, a tourist card type thing. Probably, I would probably put this, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, around there, probably the 60s or 70s on there, but it's the Titanic card. I knew it was going to sell. I didn't price it up a lot because it is just a chrome card mass produced. Um, this sold within 24 hours and it's going to Joe in Henley, Maine. Now I'll do this card and then I'll get into the, the postcard term, uh, term DPO. So I always talk about on these videos so far about signs. If you see a postcard with a sign, it's probably going to sell. Now that's my experience. So here's another one, Santa Rosa. It's just a sign. It's a postcard of a sign that says Santa Rosa. Very easy to list. My title on this one uh, was very simple. It was postcard Santa Rosa, New Mexico, because that's what it says on the sign. And it's just a chrome card unposted. But if you see any signs, those posted, it does something to people that triggers them to buy a lot of the signs. A motel with a sign outside with a name, a restaurant, uh, road signs, Route 80, Route 66, a lot of those, you know, will trigger people to buy them. Now, do they sell for a lot, a lot of money? No. They're basically chrome cards a lot of times uh, on there, but they 
will help with the cash flow. And this is sold to Philip, and it's going to St. Louis, Missouri. So not even close to New Mexico. Now, as you're seeing all these different postcards I'm showing, there's signs, there's, uh, you know, we got felt pennant cards, we got chrome cards. Uh, all different things are selling because it's a variety in our store, and people have different interests in collecting. So you always want to look for different types of cards with good subject. And sometimes my model and what I've found so far in my experience, and other people can have different opinions and different experiences about it, but I like to have low-cost cards, some medium-cost cards, and some higher-value cards. But the ones that pay the bills is the constant quantity of lower value cards selling so we majority of our cards that we sell are in the chrome and the linen and divided back but a lot of the chromes are selling and that's what you know brings the cash in if i went out and got all fifty dollar cards ten dollar cards trying to squeeze the last dollar out of every card i might sell two cards a week but with chrome cards you know we can sell hundreds of cards and it just, the money does add up over time. And the time that we spend on researching Chrome cards is very minimal. Uh, the time we spend on researching higher price cards is a lot more. So we need to get more money for that to pay for the time. So you want to have, I see that I need to have a good mixture of those different types of cards. Plus, I like the novelty cards, as you can see, uh, the different weird cards. A lot of times they don't sell right away, but I just like looking at them. But you want to have a good mixture of things. Don't turn your head away. You know, I, yesterday I just listed three Grand Canyon cards in Etsy. Did I question it? Nope. One sell? Yes. I sold one of them. Within 24 hours. It was a view from the South Rim. Standard postcard. Somebody must have went there and they bought. They say Niagara Falls don't sell. Yeah, it might take a year to sell. But it's another card that someone might be looking for. So I always recommend to people to have a good mixture, especially if you're starting off on postcards. You've got to get the cash coming in so you can go buy more postcards. Buy the equipment, you know, the scanners and stuff like that. So you want to get the cash flow coming in. And then when you get get settled and you're selling and you find that, that, that really nice postcard, put those in. And those, you know, uh, higher price cards are really nice to sell once in a while, especially when you buy them for a good price. But always try to get a variety in your store. That way it'll attract people to keep coming back. Okay, so now I have another term. The best way to learn postcards. There's a steep learning curve on postcards or there's a slow. But the easiest way to learn postcard uh, terminology is just going out and looking at the terms and reinforcing to yourself what they mean. So when people say something to you, you know what they are. But there is some crossover. So you, the more you the more you read about the terms, the more you listen to them, we have a try to I try to put one in every video because it's it's just the best way for me to learn postcards. <clears throat> so this term is called DPO. Initials DPO are used to informally designate a discontinued US post office cancel postmark. So if you have uh, a post office that is now defunct and you have a cancel for that, some people do collect those. Small post offices in rural America were operated out of small businesses. I know when we go to Florida every year, we just got back from a vacation, right there in Siesta Key, there's a drugstore across the street from where we stay at, and they have a post office in the back of that drugstore. So that's a small business, and that's the post office for Siesta Key. So that, that a lot of them were in there. As the United States grew, and shipped it to more urban areas, many of these small post offices were closed or they were combined. So basically, you know, if you got four post offices in 10 mile area and it's getting bigger, they consolidated down to one. Business sense, it makes sense. In some places, whole communities have since disappeared, leaving only postmarks behind. So they've combined towns, communities, you know, so, and this is all about the postmark cancel on the back of it. There are many who collect postcards just for the DPO cancel. A lot of people will go through looking at cards and they'll look at the cancels on the back and the postmark more than they're concerned about what's on the front. I'm more concerned about what's on the front than I am the cancel. But I do look at the cancels. The other day I just found one that was really neat. It was a smoky bear cancel for a four or five so I put it to the side I do have a video come up on cancel so I put it in the 
envelope for that. But that's what it is. And uh, so you, when you look for canceled on the back and you see a town that you know is gone, that might be a get you a couple extra dollars. If you put that in the title and the description of what it is, a lot of people aren't looking for that sometimes. And if they see that, it might trigger them to buy that card. So DPO, defunct post office, look for those cancels. See what you can do with them. Who knew? And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna show you any more eBay cards that sold. I'm gonna show you the three cards that we sold on Etsy. So basically, Etsy, like I said, is a slower platform, but they do sell. People use them for crafts over there, but some people don't go to eBay. They don't buy from there, they don't buy from HIP, they don't buy from other places, they buy from Etsy. It depends where they go, but uh, we have, like I said, about 38, 3,900 cards on Etsy. We do sell them. It does pay for itself. Uh, it's not the best uh, place for postcards, but it is another avenue to bring revenue in. <clears throat> so this first card that we have is of Newport, Ritchie, Florida. So there is a Newport somewhere else, but this is of a person staged. This is a stage, some lady sitting there, it's a canal, and uh, it's along the pitch, there is the name of the river, if you can see that, I can't say it, of the river in Newport, Ritchie, Florida. So it's just a Chrome card on Etsy, and it's sold <coughs> on there. The next card that sold on Etsy was Skyline of Wichita, Kansas. So that's just a Chrome card of Wichita, Kansas. And I would probably say this is late 50s, 60s card, just the way um, the cars are kind of. I, I'm not good with cars, but just the way it looks to me, I would have to put it in the early 60s around there. But that's an air view and, or the Skyline. So this one I said Skyline View, Wichita, Kansas. That's all I have in the title. Postcard Skyline View, which all taxes, and it triggered someone to sell. I think with these sites too, if they know, when you sign up for like Etsy, and you put in your location or your ship to address, I wonder if they know, if they see that in the title, Wichita, Kansas, to show you stuff around there. So maybe the search engines work that way, just a theory. The last card that sold on Etsy, and I always pick these up, there's a gentleman out there, or a lady, I forgot who it was, uh, that buys these cards in their Christmas Cove. I think they got searches on there. This is a card, it's uh, of Christmas Cove, it's of, I think it's the lodge or the town, but it's Christmas Cove, Maine. So if you see Christmas Cove, I mean they sell for regular price, if not higher price, but they this one person always picks these cards up for me, so I think they're constantly searching the stores for Christmas Cove. Do I price them up? No. I just know that I'm going to get, you know, $5 for this card or $450, $445 for this card when I put it up. And there's a couple other things, too, that I put up and people just snatch them up. Um, but they're just regular Chrome cards. I'm not going to, just because there's a demand for them, I'm not going to put $12 on them. I want them to keep coming back. So I've probably sold a dozen or so of these cards to people. Uh, for Christmas Cove. But those are the three cards on Etsy uh, on there and like I said I wouldn't start with Etsy or HIP. I would use eBay first transfer over to HIP if you wanted to with the automatic sync since there's really nothing out there. It's a little learning curve on HIP and then once you get those built up move into like Etsy or another site if you want to or you can just sell on eBay. Uh, that's the majority of our sales are at a, is on eBay. Now, like I promised, I'm going to get into what cards I found this week when I went out shopping around looking for cards. Just getting out, things are opening up, and we got out to some antique stores. Uh, my father-in-law actually cleaned out a American Legion. He does uh, house clean cleanouts and stuff like that, and they cleaned out an American Legion. I got a kind of a neat card, and then I got to tell you, I got a video up there for squeaker cards. What is a squeaker card? You can go check out that video. But it's a card that has a hole in the back and a little, when you squeeze it, it squeaks. I have never ever seen this many squeaker cards at once. This guy was selling his collection on eBay and he had two lots of 22 cards, 20 cards of squeaker cards. I put a bid in, just let it run, and next thing you know, I won 22 squeaker cards. This one's broke. Oh, there it goes. 
and now dogs and cats. What am I going to do with 22 squeaker cards? I couldn't beat it. I got these cards um, less than 50 cents a piece. I have never seen this many squeaker cards in one thing. So they're going to be in our store uh, in the next few weeks. Um, they do not fit through the scanner. These are just too fat for that little squeaker and it won't go through the scanner. So I got to actually use the camera method to post these. And that's probably why they're still in the box. <laughs> I'm spoiled with the scanner, but 22 squeaker cards. They're out there. Now the next cards that I found, now this is a different card. It's not a postcard, but I've never seen, I don't remember this. This is like a Universal Studio and if you see my finger behind there, it's got a little decoder window that you would get a game piece or something, and you would put this card on top of the game piece and look through there, and it would decode it. And it's made out of a plastic type of acrylic plastic. So I do sell not just postcards in our store. I sell trade cards. You know, I got Andy Griffith cards. I got some uh, Elvis cards and trade cards that are going to go up on there and just different things and they do sell so I put this in the trade card category just to see what it sells. I did find one on eBay and it's listed for like $14.95 so this is from I think it's from 2000 so that was a different type of card. Now the card that my, like I said, my father-in-law does cleanouts, and they, there was an American Legion post in Moments, Illinois, that actually sold their building and stuff, and he was uh, hired to go in and clean it all out. And he found this card in there, and it's postmarked 1948, and it's just a postal card. It's a one-cent U.S. postal card. And what those are is it's just postcards by the U.S. government that you would write a message on and mail it. And it's got the address on there. And it's talking about Dear Commander doing a carnival or whatever. But what really caught my eye on this card at the bottom here, it says, Placed in Capsule by Merritt Davis, July 12, 1979. So was this put into a time capsule? Or whatever, in 1979? And then where's the capsule? So that's all the history we have. We don't know uh, any more about the card. But I thought it was pretty cool to see the writing you know, placed in capsule in 1979. So that's a postal card that I got for there. In Chicago, there's different parts of uh, things. There's Union Stockyards. I picked this card up. It's of all the stockyards. One guy I talked to used to live in what they call the back of the yards. He used to be able to walk across the backs of the cattle there. Um, I picked up this card. This is a Redwood. I always pick up the Redwood cards, like by Sam Mirror Woods and stuff. And this is uh, Yo Yosemite... National Park, California, clothespin tree. I've never seen the clothespin tree. I've seen the one where they, you know, drive the cars through the big redwoods, but it actually looks like an old-time clothespin. So I thought that was pretty cool. Again, this is a university. This is actually Chicago Seminary. Uh, Pekin Theater. Pekin's a local in Illinois. I always try to pick up the local cards. This is another Pekin Corn Products that I picked up. Those are white border cards, by the way. And then this was just an older divided back card. It had a writing tab on it I thought it was pretty cool. <clears throat> and then I did find a pen card. Now this is not a felt pen card. This is actually printed, so there's no felt on here. But it has the name, everybody doing it at. So it's kind of a standard saying up there. And then the companies would just print whatever. So this is, everybody's doing it at Alvarado. I could say everybody's doing it at Kankakee, Illinois. Everybody's doing it at Philadelphia, you know. So that's a, another pennant card, but it's not a felt pennant card or a foil pennant card. So I picked that one up, and this was uh, postmarked 1910. Uh, here's a hospital, a linen card. Always pick up hospitals. Slits Brewing Company. I found this in uh, Antique Mall. So that's of the Slits Brewing Company. Your diehard beer people, you know, postcard collectors will by that. And then you got a school, the Jefferson School. High school is always good, especially if they have the name. So this is Jefferson High School in Gary, Indiana. Michael Jackson's hometown. And then, th I thought this was pretty cool. Ottawa, Illinois is close to us. And this is a dam. I like the rivers and stuff. It's just a chrome card. And then this one was interesting. It was uh, a cave in Hannibal, Missouri, but it's got the entrance right there. 
so people walking up there just a chrome card so I picked all these cards up just this last week along with the squeaker cards <clears throat> I think I in the squeaker cards less than 50 cents a card so I will have to price it up a little bit the other cards you know I might be into them in 50 cents a piece but you do pay up when you buy the smaller ones but some cards I get for under a penny and then some cards I got to pay a dollar for or 50 cents for so it kind of is an average but I won't turn down a card just because of the you know 50 cents more but looking for postcards they're out there so check out our other videos we have a lot of different types of cards we have scanning videos I did one on camera versus scanner what's the best way to do it how to build your business up there's just a whole we're getting a really good catalog of different things for you know to sell more postcards on eBay and Etsy if you like this video and you continue want to learn more about selling postcards please hit that subscribe button hit the bell icon to be notified and hit the thumbs up let me know if you like it if there's any questions you have for the community that we're building here or myself please put it in the comments and we'll uh, respond I've seen some good comments in there or if there's anything uh, you would like me to do on the videos put it in there I have a lot of videos scheduled out for the year I just got to get them uh, organized and done but Tuesdays we try to put out the short videos and Thursday, Friday, or Saturday we put out these longer videos. Thanks again for watching and we appreciate it.